Hey awesome volunteers, how are you today? I hope you're doing great. Wanted to spend a minute talking to you today in our training tidbit about the words we use. Now remember, all of these training tidbit videos are us taking bite-sized pieces in a kids ministry training uh, so that we can all continue to grow in how we love and serve the kids when they're in ministry with us. And today for our training tidbit, I just want to focus on uh, the words that we use. So when we come to church, there are a lot of words that we say regularly. Things like gospel, things like justification, sanctification, even words like blessing and holy. Great words, wonderful words. They're from the Bible. I mean, they're words we should use. But when we're teaching kids, it's really important for us to remember that not everybody understands the correct meaning behind those words. So I want to encourage all of us to make sure that we explain what we're talking about, especially when it comes to big or words, big words or words that are kind of churchy. And what I mean by that is just words that we use a lot in church, but maybe aren't um, used outside of church a ton. So I have two examples of ways that things could be a little confusing and why it's so important that we would be clear when we teach kids. So the first one is the word holy. Now, when we're talking about God, you and I understand that holy is connected to the uniqueness of him being the creator and his moral goodness. And kids are capable of understanding that, but especially for the younger ones. When they hear the word holy, they stand a really good chance of thinking about a hole in the ground or a hole in their jeans or a hole in Swiss cheese. Holy, oh, so God's like Swiss cheese with lots of holes. Because many times kids are concrete thinkers. The abstract thinking part of their brain's not quite there yet. It's normal for their development. But uh, they associate a word like holy with the only thing they have a reference for. They have a reference for a piece of Swiss cheese or their dog digging a hole in the backyard. And so when we say God's holy, if we don't explain it, then they might be apt to just associate it with literal holes. And it's no fault of their own, but it's an encouragement to us to make sure that we pause. And as we talk about God, we read a verse like Isaiah chapter 6, where the angels in heaven cry out that God is holy, holy, holy. That we would describe that that doesn't mean God's riddled with holes like Swiss cheese, but that he is above us. He is separate from us. He is perfect and morally good. Another one is, another example is from Awana. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, say that Christ died in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. A wonderful summary of the gospel, and in many ways, the best way to summarize the gospel to kids, uh, in my opinion, because it's so concise and yet so true. Now, that word buried, you and I understand, means that Jesus was put in the grave. And when we explain it to a child, they'll understand that as well. But in Awana one time, Miss Sandra asked a child what buried means. And the child's response was, oh yeah, Jesus ate a lot of blueberries. It's kind of cute, right? But once again, a child is grabbing uh, a concrete concept that they have when there's a bit more of an abstract uh, idea going on. You know, so they're thinking Jesus has blueberries. Now, I'm sure the Lord loves blueberries because, well, honestly, who doesn't, but uh, it is very important for us to understand that uh, when we're talking to kids, we've got to explain what is going on and help them understand the words that we use. We want to be really clear when we use words uh, that kids understand. So I just want to encourage all of us, when we're preparing our lessons, or when we're thinking about leading a small group on Wednesday night, or just having a conversation with a kid. Let's think about what words we're using, and let's pause and make sure to explain anything that might be confusing to a child so that they can clearly understand the scriptures, which will help us accomplish our vision of getting the scriptures into the heads, hands, and hearts of every kid. Thank you so much for all you do, and I'll see you the next time we are all at church.